Back in the office, it's Wednesday, it's time to pack a few orders and get on the road, <laughs> whatever that means, today on The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. Welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers. It's Dealer with the Wednesday edition of The Crazy Picker Life. What's the key to success in the picking business? Well, you have to stay moving and you have to do the right things. That's it. So, we went on this 11 day trip and it would have been nice to take just a full relaxing vacation, but I knew from experience that we were gonna be passing by a lot of picking opportunities and so it was a picking trip as well as a vacation. I'm going to talk about that today on the show. I got to pack some orders. I don't have too many. I think I have nine, maybe ten orders. I'm going to get those out. I'm going to get all my daily stuff done. And then I will return later to talk about the logistics and the money and the time and the output and the expected output and everything about our picking trip that we took last week the 11 day picking trip back in a flash all right so here it is after supper and i think today wednesday after the trip here i'm having kind of a like blah, day <laughs> Kind of a whatever day, so I'm sitting with Wheeler for a minute. Oops, sort of, I've got a day for some reason, Where'd but it, go? it's a totally different reason from the other one there. It's because I went on a crazy run today and my legs are thoroughly sore and I'm just feeling kind of blah too. But so Wheeler's uh, run. starting his running again. We're yep. going to be doing a race here in about four weeks and he doesn't want to get beat by his brothers. <laughs> well, man, I'm running circles around them at this point and I haven't even barely started. So we're talking about the trip here for a minute. I went into Wheeler's office to get his thoughts and then I want to go into my office and I told Wheeler I'm going to launch into a tirade about the trip, but that was just a joke. Okay, so uh, general thoughts about the trip in two seconds. Well, it definitely wasn't a vacation. Okay, that's it. Well, okay, so the pace of the trip, would you classify it as leisurely? Uh, would you classify it as intense? Would you classify it somewhere in between? What do you think? So everyday life is about four or five out of ten. Trip was about seven to seven and a half out of ten pace wise. It wasn't quite as crazy as some trips we go on because we found most of our stuff early on, but with all the kids and everybody else along, it was pretty chaotic. Yeah, it wasn't really relaxing. No. Um, we have been on two or three day trips where I think we pack it in harder, or even one, one and a half day trips where we really pack it in. But yeah, we found stuff pretty early. Um, the weather was kind of a downer. Yeah, it was, and I stayed up kind of late, so I could if I got a lot more sleep and done everything right, I probably would have felt a little bit better. But I kind of pushed it a little bit too. Well, we all sort of overeat, and we all kind of have different sleeping because we we have a, okay we have a later schedule you and i and sometimes banana peeler and your sister kate and your mom has an early schedule and the youngest kids have an early schedule so and going so going to bed at midnight plus and wake up at 7 a.m to 8 a.m wasn't quite yeah and even if you didn't night. wake up it just yeah. it was louder than normal exactly. and of course we're sleeping in four different places <laughs> and all that kind of stuff yep of course, the unpacky and packy was always fun. You know that was right. that was the break in between all that. that was the vacation. Right. Well, do you think anybody got a vacation? Because uh, everybody wow. had to yeah do some stuff. I guess we got everybody involved. So, what do you think about the quality of items overall? And then, of course, we had a huge camera score. Tell me what you think. Well, without the camera score, the whole trip wouldn't have been like super crazy or anything because. It, if we hadn't gotten the camera store obviously we would have picked more so that would have been the deal but i'd say the quality overall was pretty was high percentage high. wise um the big camera score was about 60 percent 70 60 to 70 percent of the money we spent yeah 
And so if we didn't have that at all, the quality of the trip would have been, of course, a lot less, but it still would have been pretty good, I think. Oh, yeah. It just, it wouldn't have, you know. So if we set aside everything else but the big camera score, the big camera score, I think, is a, is a what would, how many times our money do you think just knowing, you, you went through that stuff with the guy mm. very closely. Would you, would you be able to put a number on that, you think? I don't think so, not off the top of my head. It's, it's quite a bit because like we were saying, I think we spent 14000 It's probably like a 100000 easy we say profit on that, or well, I threw numbers that? at you. We spent yeah. we spent somewhere just over twelve thousand okay, on that, okay. yeah. and you know, ten ten times our money that would be one hundred twenty thousand. Twenty times our money, two hundred forty thousand retail. I think it's it's if we list everything at retail, I think we're going to list it for probably close to the two hundred forty thousand. Yeah. And by the time you go through sales and fees and time and uh, some of that stuff's going to fail and be returns and all that stuff, I, that, you know, I'm going to stick to the, the notion from experience and looking at that stuff that there's $100,000 profit Yep. Uh, when it's all said and done just on that stuff. But, you, you know, you got in there and looked at that stuff. There's a lot of... We talked how many pieces there were, too, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Just insane amount of pieces. I I don't remember what I estimated that. It's like... I guess you were saying, like, about a dollar a piece, so 12,000 pieces, something in there. Yeah, well, we tried That's We tried to estimate. we tried to quantify it, and it's hard because there's, there's I don't know, maybe four or 500 to 1,000 lenses. Mm-hmm. And some of the lenses are little goober ones, so it gets to be kind of hard to visualize and figure that out. We're going to actually lay them all I out. I think it's around the 300 mark on lenses, because we had that big pile of lenses last time, and that filled almost this whole table, and that was only 270-some. Yeah, so we got a lot of big, heavy, more that, heavy ones. And then, and then you know, that, that takes up a lot of space, but then you go to things like the little goober accessories and stuff. Oh, yeah. There are, you know, there are totes that have 200 pieces in them, mm -hmm. 500 pieces in them. And for the most part, they're all ten, twenty, thirty, fifty dollar pieces. Yeah. Yep. So it's really hard to quantify, but there's so yes. much. There's so much there. It's it's pretty much insane. Yep. So you know, when when I talk about it in my office in a little while, I'm gonna have to talk in general terms. But we've purchased from this source before, and so we kind of know what we're in for. Yep. It was just a more extreme case. Um, we found some other really good things too. Yep. Some, what I would call pinpoint things where the profit on each item is 50 or more. Mm -hmm. And we didn't necessarily spend that much on some of those either. So what else, what else do you have to say about the trip? What comes to mind? Oh, well, let's see. I had a couple of things before we started here, but I have to think of what exactly those were. Well, if we hadn't picked up that big camera score at the beginning, first of all, we would have tried a little bit harder. I think we probably would have picked up at least twice where we picked up the other stuff besides the big score. At least twice. Because we, would, we would have, we would have, Omaha, we would have had a picked more. up our pace. Yeah. We would have went to more uh, pawn shops and things oh, like yeah. that. For sure. We didn't... We, didn't, we, we never were, have a lack of stuff. If we want to pick stuff if we want to look for stuff we can find unlimited stuff we can find more than we can list we were very selective yep after that even though we ran into a few regular stops yeah. and we we picked up we weren't as selective in a few places <laughs> but yeah we still ended up throwing away like four or five boxes of stuff mm -hmm. that we we took off we took off people's hands because we we helped them close out some things clear the shelf yeah, yeah and we threw out threw out some stuff so 11 days on the road, really, if you condense all our picking down to, say, 10-hour picking days, yeah, it really was only two or three days of picking. Yep. But we did a lot of driving, a lot of running around, a lot of, you know, a lot of other stuff. Your mom and I went out some. So what if you had to live that lifestyle? What if you didn't have to list anything, but what if we had to do that kind of lifestyle straight? Would it wear you out? Oh, well, at yeah, that pace, man. Because the problem is I got kind of like on coffee for those couple of days. They're coming off that is a little bit crazy. Yeah. Just, and also, like, I'm super into pizza and burgers now because we have those every day. So I got to pull back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, our it, food. It definitely, you go into this kind of weird rhythm. Road mode. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. So I wonder how, you know, I wonder how, like Frank and Mike, they seem to be on the road 50 weeks out of the year. The maybe. thing is, oh, well, so I can get you off there. Go ahead. Yeah. The thing is, you know, we're going with eight people instead of just two. Two is a lot more manageable than eight. Well, so there's a lot of there's a lot of age separation between all of us, mm -hmm. and a lot of directions everybody goes, and of course the van is big, but it's not as that big as you'd think. As crazy, at least. Yeah, when you pack at everything least. in there, it's that van is not that big. And yeah. ho hotel rooms, even though we got some suites that were like three rooms, four rooms, multi suites, good size suites, two two hotel rooms, still with eight people, it's that's a lot. Yep. And so that, and that, you know, think think about it, from when people wake up to when people go to to sleep in our family, it's like a twenty hour day. It is really. So that's pretty crazy. Well, yeah. okay. So any parting thoughts? Nope, nothing off the top of my head. All right, you got some watches you're working on. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, I'll let you get to it. Got Are you getting eager to get to some of that oh, stuff? Oh yeah, for sure. Well, I'm hoping tonight, I, I got to do some other things. I'm hoping tonight oh. to unpack. I'm hoping to put lenses out because I think that'll be neat to look at. Oh, yeah, it will because, like I said, we had that big tote last time, which that was like a huge tote of lenses we got for the same place. and just. Well, these are uh, bigger. There's zoom lenses and stuff. Oh, but yeah. Do you know Do you know how many tote totes of lenses there are? Six? At least. Yeah, because these were smaller lenses, but there are 280 of them there, I think. Yeah, there's at lenses. least. It'll be cool at least six totes of lenses i'm yep. pretty sure we can fill almost that whole back area but yeah. maybe i'm dreaming we'll see <laughs> okay i think three to four hundred is my guess so. well we'll, we'll, we'll count them yeah that'll be interesting. all right we'll catch you later yep. all right so i'm not going to drag out this vlog but i want to talk about a few things about this trip and i'm pretty uh excited about the end result but really Every time I go on one of these trips, it's a little different, and uh, I guess I I learn something from each and every trip. And I don't know if I'm more worn out after this trip than other trips. I don't think so. Um, I'll talk about what we did in this particular case before the trip and after the trip. I don't I don't know what to say about the thing. I think I know what wore me out, but we'll talk about that okay so i'm going to draw a map here for a minute um, we did about 2500 miles home base in kansas we are in northwest kansas that's no, weird drawing through that i can't do that um we trucked up into nebraska and over to iowa and up into minnesota into the minneapolis area now we left at about mm, 8 p.m. on Wednesday and we got up into the Minneapolis area early in the morning. We had an appointment at our first pick where we spent all that money for 9 a.m. On, uh, on Thursday. And so we had to get up there. So I drove through the night, which obviously is not recommended, but it does have some advantages. You don't have to put up with people stopping all the time. You don't have to put up with too much traffic. Okay, rookie mistake, battery problem. <laughs> so, you know, drove through the night. Um, had to do that. My wife, Lon, had a work schedule where we couldn't leave any earlier. And the contact we were meeting, that was the only time we could meet with them. So that did send me into sort of a you know time warp <laughs> for the rest of the trip i think i shook out of it but you know that always that always is fun and then we were a few days in minneapolis in fact four days we had uh some fun there and uh, my brother-in-law came up and his family so that was good then we trucked over to i guess there's no gap but wisconsin sheboygan area and we spent three days there. We went up into uh, Appleton, which is right in that vicinity. We didn't go up to Green Bay this time. Um, three days there, then we went down to my hometown of Janesville, Wisconsin, spent a day there, and trucked all the way over to Omaha. I guess Nebraska now goes all the way over there. Uh, truck to Omaha, we like to kind of break that trip up home. We've done it 
where we don't and it's a long long drive it's like 12 hours if you drive straight and during the day with uh, eight people in the vehicle you never can we spent two days in omaha that was a lot of fun didn't do any picking or did very little picking and uh, unfortunately did do some shopping um, so it almost felt like picking except worse because i didn't want to buy anything <laughs> and let's see then we went home so 2,500 miles, kind of a loop. We have done this a few times. So we spent, you know, a certain amount of time in each area. Uh, it did allow us to rest and relax a little bit and kind of space out the driving a little bit. 2,500 miles in 11 days is still a lot because it's a couple hundred miles a day. Uh, my wife will not drive the big van. Noah is, he's, his, uh, Noah Wheeler does not have my, his license. So that's a long story, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> He'll get it one of these days. And even so, um, you know, a young driver, that big van I have, weather through the night, loaded, uh, blind spots, that's just not an e easy drive. So it's really not a discussion, um, dealer, why do you drive all the time? I mean, it's just, I, you know, I've driven 30 plus years. I've driven everything. That is just the thing I do. But it's a couple hundred miles a day, 250 miles a day, whatever, average. Um, that wears on you. So I don't mind driving. I, you know, there's days I really like driving. Get out on the road, see stuff. Uh, most of the family is quiet most of the time, so it's not it's not that bad. But it, that is something to to consider when you're doing this. Okay, let me not put that in my mouth. <laughs> so timeline wise, you know this is leaving and this is getting back. There's there's a there's sort of like a, a timeline of pre-trip and a timeline of post-trip, and there's a preparation period. No matter what you're thinking about the trip for for weeks and even months in advance. This particular time, I made reservations uh, really early and got really good rates on hotels. We'll talk about money in in a few minutes. Um, I use Hotels.com. I get a free night every 10 based on the amount you spend. We still were able to get really good rates on places. Every year it seems like we get bigger and bigger suites or double rooms or whatever. Uh, family gets bigger. Uh, you know, sleeping arrangements change. We, we don't really, Lon and I don't really want to sleep in the same room as everybody else because sleep is precious for old people <laughs> i need my sleep especially you know if i'm driving through the night or have to meet with people or negotiate or drive uh, the next day or if i want to go out whatever so um we booked the hotels before we went obviously packing up uh it, there's quite a bit of coordination trying to tell the kids uh, you know what temperatures to expect you got to kind of watch the weather hey bring your your swimsuit for the pool bring your toothbrush you know all that and then there's all the business stuff we send stuff back so i have to make sure i've got my labels i've got my uh, boxes i've got enough packing materials over the last few years uh we figured that out so i can minimize you know what what needs to be uh, brought even so you know you never bring enough of something so then you have to improvise now one thing that threw a, a sort of a corkscrew in this whole thing is we decided to do a house painting project a few days before um, we went on this trip and part of the reason we did that is we wanted it in this particular case to dry and cure while we were gone and we were hoping that the fumes from it would be mostly gone when we weren't there right because we had have have had cooler temperatures and really couldn't air out the house and all that kind of stuff so 
that was challenging because we had to work that in with everything else. We left on Wednesday night. Lon worked Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And to add another little corkscrew to that, she had to go out of town to a conference Monday and Tuesday. So I think part of the problem with this project uh, that we completed, which Wednesday I was putting on a final coat before we packed up and before we drove through the night, I was a little burnt out from taking care of the kids and doing all that stuff Monday and Tuesday with Lon being gone. So it was a little bit stressful. I did not push business activities the few days beforehand. I shut off my auctions and everything on eBay and Amazon on Tuesday sometime and didn't have very many orders to pack or deal with or questions to deal with on Wednesday. So that that was nice. Sometimes I take it right up to the end, you know, and try to get that last sale and the, the stress was just not worth it. So we turn off the auctions. Um, I bring along, you know, my laptop or whatever you want to call it and uh, a few other things that I can do emails and answer questions and, and wrap up some business things. No matter what we do, since we're selling 10 plus packages a day average, uh, probably closer to 15 average per day, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a few orders that are dangling. And I had one that was paid or bought but not paid for that I knew the person was going to pay for it. And so I actually printed the label and brought that order along. And once they paid on the road, we were up in Minneapolis, then I mailed it. Another one I gambled that the person was not going to pay, and it turned out they did not pay and still haven't paid, and they tell me they're going to, so we'll have to see what happens there. I'm in contact with them. But no matter what, you've got some things dangling, and um, you try to you try to work with all those. I'm not against you know shooting out emails and say, hey, I'd like to get this out to you. I'm going on the road, and I did do that in a couple of uh, cases and got things out. Um, another thing you have to deal with on the road is any returns that happen, you need to refund without seeing the item. So we had a couple of those come in, and if you don't work with those um, quickly you can either end up with a negative or a mad customer or a mad eBay and so when that stuff comes in it'll say it's been delivered you might as well just refund it and then if there's anything after the fact you just you have to chalk that up to the trip okay what else happened beforehand um, leaving town the van really was in good shape. That van will swallow up a lot of stuff. So that wasn't a problem. Pack it all in there. Everything feels good. Boom. You take off down the road. You drive through the night. Everybody falls asleep. And, you know, it's not that great a sleep <laughs> for them. And then uh, when we got to Minneapolis, the last 50 miles took us about three hours because I took a nap. We all stopped for some food. And we had traffic jams. When we were on the trip, one of the interesting things that happened, and I lost a lot of points with Lon, um, and I wish she would just get over it because it was business related. I've tried to make it up with her, whatever. You know, that's. <laughs> but here's what happened. Okay, so we're at this place, and I didn't know how much stuff we were going to buy. I knew we were going to buy a lot, okay? But it turned out there was twice as much as I had anticipated and it's not like I'm gonna leave it there okay because this place could go away my contact could go away the stuff is super good if it's available I'm gonna buy it so it's enough to fill up the van and Lon and the all the kids besides Wheeler are at the mall about 20 minutes away and we're getting into the afternoon and there's a lot of traffic and so I have two choices I could abandon the deal I could go take Lon and the kids to the hotel and I could try to get back and try to load this thing up before this place closes 
and I probably would get stuck in traffic and either way it would it would mean like two hours in traffic and just a lot of stress or I could load up and take it to the hotel and have Lon get an Uber or a cab to the hotel from the mall. I suggested she did that. She did that. Um, she wasn't happy, but it turned out she was a lot less happy, and she thinks I killed her cat, basically. She doesn't have a cat, but it's just, it's an example. Uh, it's a scene, right? I mean, she, she really took it as a blow, and I had to make a decision. The van was so loaded, there was no room for people. It made a lot of sense. Even with that, I don't think we got to the hotel till like 3.30 in the afternoon. And we sat in traffic for a half hour. So there you go, right? The rest of the trip was fun. We went out. We had fun. Um, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Just chalk it on the list of like the things that I've done that have caused trouble, right? I'm such a troublemaker, you know? I, I have the best interest of the family at heart. I'm so sorry, Lon. Please forgive me. See, you have it documented. Okay, after the trip. So, you know, uh, go on the pre-trip, we go on the trip, then there's after the trip. We're home now for four days, three days, what the heck day is it? It's Wednesday. So Monday was a shipping holiday. We got home Sunday. We did unpack everything Sunday just to get it out of the van and in a safer place. Um, Monday was a huge packing day. Tuesday was a huge shipping day out and shipping inbound where I picked up everything that had been shipped to, uh, to my post office box basically. And then today is a slowdown day. I started my uh, promotional sales back up today. Uh, we had like 10 or 12 orders go out today. I've only had like three or four or five right now. That's fine. <laughs> when, when I did orders on Monday, uh, you know, it was over 60 orders. I didn't even count them. It was a lot. Some of them were big and ugly to pack. Um, even though that's great, it's a nice bunch of money. It's too much. You know, it's just, it's too much. Too much, too much, too much. <laughs> and why do I do that? Well, we did shut things off for, you know, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eight days off. Our average cash flow is five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a day in sales. Um, you shut that off for eight days, and it's not like you're losing inventory. But cash flow is king. That can be five grand. That's four or five thousand dollars, thirty-five hundred, four thousand, forty-five hundred dollars of cash flow. On the other side of that, you're putting out money, buying inventory, gas, lodging, food, and fun. Um, there's a there's a cash flow bubble. Sure, you can plan for it, and I did. But you don't want that turned off any any uh, longer than you have to. It's, uh, it's a cost because the clock is still ticking. I still have rent. I still have to pay Wheeler. I still have to pay all the other overhead of running a business. My inventory gets uh, eight days older. <laughs> you know, it's just, that's just the cost of doing business. But why do I turn them back on before I'm back in the office and show up with 61 orders? Well, because I'm a go-getter. <laughs> you know, the whole thing about running this business is I can plan all these different things, but part of my mindset and part of the reason I think we, we sell so much is I'm always looking for ways to maximize it. Now, you know, that tends to wear me down from time to time, and then I have to plan like some downtime or really cut back or take a week of sleeping in or feel a little groggy or whatever, but that's just how we do it. Now that might not be for everybody, but that's that's how we do it. So that's what I did. I turned on my auctions um, late, late, late Wednesday, I believe. 
and then so we were on say we were selling stuff Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, show up Monday. Now afterwards, like I mentioned, we did all those orders. The nice thing about it is that was a shipping holiday, so I didn't have to like you know get up at midnight and work all through the morning to have stuff shipped out that day. I was able to put in a a sort of meandering super long Monday. <laughs> And it did go later than I thought. Part of that is I started vlogging again on on Monday and I had to uh, edit that video after I was done packing. And I had probably one or two beers. <laughs> so it, it, you know, it turned into a gingerly paced long day, I guess. Um, you know, you gotta get your, your life all sort of back straightened out. One nice thing is we are done with school, and so we had school all finished up before we went on the vacation. And um, when we come back, you know, we don't have to do school activities. That's not always the case. Sometimes we go on trips where um, we're right in the middle of school. Not a, we, we've kind of planned around that for most most of our bigger trips. Now we have a trip coming up in the fall where we're going to be gone maybe six weeks and we're actually planning to start up school again here in a couple weeks in June here to get a jump on it so that when we go on this trip we're actually done with uh, the first half of the year and then we're not going to do school on the trip and then we come back and we'll have to start it up again so you know we have some flexibility because we homeschool However, um, homeschool, just like running a business, uh, you know, it's not a walk in the park. I think it's worth it. But, you know, again, that, you know, it's, there's a lot to it. So let's not do, let's not do a homeschool rant. <laughs> okay, so before the trip, obviously things going on. After the trip, it's a lot of unpacking. There's a lot of things to get started up again. Um everybody wants something out of dealer and dealer a lot of times me has to say no later let's schedule it um, there are some critical things that i have to do before and after a trip and so i really have to delegate and i really have to uh, communicate to everybody and for the most part everybody's pretty good on that but you know there's always things that people want and they just don't understand and that is a little more stress on me, um, both before and realistically on the trip and realistically after. So if I make the big bucks in this family, there's a reason. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say that. I think I earn it. <laughs> and if I want a beer once in a while, I think I earn it as well. So there you go. Toot your own horn if you got it, right? Let's talk about something else. Uh, before and after strategy. Let me stop this just a second and recalibrate. Okay, I think I got what I want to do. I want to talk a little bit about money. Now, if you're planning a trip like this, or if you're already doing trips like this, uh, you know, it, really what it comes down to is you get better at it. And you can do all the planning you want, but there's always going to be things that happen. There's always going to be learning. There's always going to be challenges. Something different is going to happen. This trip was was challenged by the weather, and there was nothing crazy about the weather. But when it rains 10 days out of 11, most of the time, um, your activities are inside. Your loading and unloading are challenged. you got to watch out for your kids a little bit more. People are driving crazy. It's just, I, I think that really stressed me a little bit more when it's all said and done. I mean, it's just, um, I, I think you feel a little gloomier. I don't know. Who, who knows? You know, your allergies might be going a little bit more. We've had trips where we've had weather before, but it's never, it's never constant like that. So we're in a wet cycle here in the Midwest in general. So I don't know what to say about that. Okay. So let me put some numbers up here. What we spent on inventory, I did an estimate before a show. We spent a lot of money, some would say. 
Um, $15,242 is what I came up with. And 12000 of that was all in one stop. Everything else we got good deals on, but that was probably our best uh, score. Uh, gasoline, something around 300 Obviously, we take a business deduction on that at so much per mile. So that's a really good deduction. Even though I have a big van and all that, that that's, works out really nice. But uh, obviously there's costs in running a van. Last year I put tires on the van and it was, you know, $1,400 for good tires. There's, you know, there's costs involved in running a road show, right? Uh, hotel, something like $1,700 for 11 nights. And I think we got pretty good uh, rooms. We like to get rooms if we can get them where you get a free breakfast and some of them like the embassy suites the breakfast is sweet and so if our family was to go out every day for a breakfast like the one we can get at the embassy suites eight people it would be like 80 bucks and so that's a huge perk and then some of the places have like happy hour where you get free drinks and snacks for the kids and all that stuff adds up that's pretty nice hotels.com we get a one room out of ten and so some of those rooms that i booked were freebies uh, seventeen hundred dollars is right around about what we spent and some of the rooms are cheaper and some are more and it all depends on a lot of different factors uh food i had a hard time estimating that i did not keep track of that i paid cash for a lot of it um, i'm going to put down fifteen hundred dollars and i think we brought a bunch along and i'm not sh i would say the seventeen hundred could be high in other words we probably spent a little less than that with some of the free rooms and the food money could be low because I know we went out for a couple expensive meals and most of our breakfasts were at the hotel and those were included in there. So snacks, a lot of, you know, kids, my kids are interesting. I pay a, a, several of them. I pay a Wheeler obviously to work here and he does pretty well. I pay Banana Peeler to work here. He has a paper route. My son Benjamin co works the paper route. And Kate, we started paying this year to do the cooking for dinners around our house uh, many of the days of the week. And so all of them have their own money and earn their own money. They buy their own snacks. Now, it doesn't mean that they're buying their own food or anything like that, but they're buying snacks and stuff like that. That takes the heat off of this, but I think it teaches them something too. It teaches them how much that stuff costs. Um, fun money, I don't know what we spent, 500 uh, I didn't keep track of it. We had some fun and did some different things. And then there was shopping, which I probably personally only spent like 10 bucks. <laughs> but I know Lon spent some pretty good money shopping for clothes for the kids and for herself and some other things that she got for herself. And so who knows, but... Um, so that's kind of what the trip costs. What does that add up to? Three, maybe four grand on top of the inventory. So maybe we spent 20. Um, we're gonna lay out the inventory because most of it's still back there. I showed, I showed some of it. Let me flip that up. I showed some of the inventory in yesterday's vlog, Tuesday's vlog. That was just a very small part of what we bought. We're gonna show all of it uh, over the next probably week <laughs> we're hitting some more uh, picking here Friday and Saturday so um, that's going to limit the amount of time that we have in the office to list things and to pack orders so I'm going to try to put some out every night if I can but here's a couple ways to think of this and you'll have to be the judge um, all of our eBay channels are listed in the uh, description below the, the box there. If you open it up, they're all in there. You can track what we have listed and what we sell and all that. We're full disclosure. But 
experience and just going through this stuff when we bought it, looking it up when we were in the hotels and during that and knowing sort of what we got there. Um, we both, you know, you were listening to Wheeler before. We think we got 10,000 plus pieces and a lot of those are camera pieces. Uh, that's like a dollar fifty a piece throughout the whole deal there. Um, Ten times the money I think is is going to be easy to get on the camera stuff. I'm thinking we're going to make somewhere between ten to twenty times our money. We got a great deal because of the amount of stuff we bought. We got a great deal on the camera stuff because a lot of it is hard to to identify and a lot of his is oddball stuff and we just do great with that stuff so 10 times the money is 150k to 300k retail that's when we list it and then we go through a lot of sales on items we reduce the price of items uh in those 10,000 items are going to be some items that we list for 200 300 500 maybe even more per item. Some of those items will go pretty quick and some of those items will sit around for a while and be reduced in price. So when it's all said and done, a very, very easy estimate, and I've thought about this for a while and I base it on the past and I base it on everything we've done since the beginning to get a feel for this. Uh, I used to keep stats and, and I've looked at our numbers in the past and it's just a real round number but i think with all the expenses and inventory in this trip when we come out of it from beginning to end and this is going to take us a while to list this even if we lot up a bunch of it even if we throw out a bunch of it um, even if um, it takes a while to sell it doesn't matter it's 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 an epic trip for us because there's a hundred thousand dollars of profit and that you know that's a, that's a round number I would say that's a uh, that's a, a viable number that would be after eBay fees that would be after PayPal fees that would be after shipping um, that would be after the initial fifteen thousand in inventory and the four or five thousand dollars that were on the trip all all said and done okay all expenses a hundred thousand dollars so obviously the 11 day trip was stressful right i mean there's i don't know how many hours how, how do you calculate how many hours you work i mean driving alone 2500 miles is that work is that vacation who knows the picking the loading unloading um, the bringing the stuff to the post office. When does the work start and when does it end? I don't know. I put in a lot of hours. And, and then there was fun on top of that. I, I enjoyed spending some time with the family. I enjoyed spending time with Lon. Uh, all packed in there. And there was some, some sleep in there. There certainly was caffeine of all sorts. So you got that, and then there's the, 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 the pain of it all is a couple days before the trip, the couple days after. So you, you have all that included in the, the, the pain of it or the fun of it, I guess, you know, whatever, however you look at that, the work of it, right? Then there's a listing of all of it, the sorting of all of it, the packing of all of it, answering all the questions, um, the inventorying of all of it the cleaning of all of it, the moving it all around. You take that all into account and then you take $100,000 and you divide by all that, I still think it's a, it's a very viable um, deal. If we took all the work involved in it, I think it's a good enough trip where we could do all that work if we could do it linearly, listing, packing, all that, if it worked like that, it would be six months or less of work. Now, it probably will stretch out in a sense because stuff doesn't sell. Uh, it'll stretch out for probably two years. You know, some of this stuff will sell two years from now. Um, it's, it's the 80-20 rule. 
20% of that stuff's going to sell quick. The other 80% is going to take longer. Who knows where the break points are, but that's, that's just going to be it, you know. So is it all worth it? Um, yes. And I guess I'll say one more thing about that is could I have taken this trip five years ago? Did I have the experience? Um, no. So both Wheeler and I have paid, and my family, because they all know what to do on a trip like this. We, we, they, I mean, they're very helpful, and they understand to some degree what to expect, even though like the um, Uber situation where I couldn't pick them up and some other things always come up. They know They know mostly what to expect. And so Wheeler and I and my family have paid an experiential price for the last number of years to be able to do this. So would we have been able to do this uh, five years ago? Probably not. We probably would not have been as efficient. There could have been, um, you know, some other problems. Um, the cash flow, the money would have been more challenging. Uh, a risk. I, you know, I don't, I, I probably was the same, quote, risk taker five years ago, but experience wise, I wouldn't have been able to get the benefit of the, the number I'm throwing out there, the $100,000 uh, profit. We, we wouldn't have done necessarily as well in this partic particular venue. Now, five years ago, um, I had a similar situation where I spent like $30,000 on these air purifiers and I probably came out of there with a hundred thousand profit and that was equally as crazy of a trip in fact maybe crazier I did a vlog on that or talked about that with Wheeler on camera once but we don't need to go there so can you do this if you're if you're not already doing this sure you can do you want to I don't know <laughs> I don't know will I do it again you know, we, we change it up a little bit, and we're talking about changing it up. Like when we go on this uh, six-week trip, we're planning a week of travel, four weeks in the same place, and then another week of travel. I would like to do a lot more relaxing and leisurely activities. That's not going to be a, the kind of trip where we're um, gunning it all the time, I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't know if I'd survive it. So... We're always, we're always learning and changing and surviving and trying new things. But we, you know, we go a couple times a year on two, three day heavy picking trips uh, in our area here within a few hundred miles. And those are always fun. And by the time you're done with those, you're worn out too, no matter what. And some of those are in the, the heat of summer, which can really be something as well. So... Uh, juggling the family, I had written down. You know, I, I do have the support of my family in this. They do understand, but then again, they don't necessarily understand. So it is, if, you, if you're the picker and you're trying to pull this off in your own family, um, you do have to master politics of the family. You certainly have to, to give, be a giver. Because uh, somebody's always going to want something. If you have kids, you, you guys all know how that is. You know, you've got to set boundaries on certain things, but you have to support your kids and what they want to do. It's a juggle. Um, my wife works hard at her job. When she goes on vacation, she wants to shop. She wants to do certain things. And so you got to juggle that. Uh, I like to spend time with her. I like to spend time with my family. So you have to juggle that. There's comfort issues, there's food issues, there's basic needs like bathroom issues. Our oldest is uh, Wheeler at 18, our youngest is Elizabeth at 5. Today you got electronic devices up the yin yang. In fact, I blew the fuses on my van, I think, like two hours into the trip. <laughs> I still haven't fixed it. They learned to charge their stuff and then. You know, then that's that. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Uh, there, there's a reason I call it the crazy picker life. <laughs> it's not just because we're crazy. You know, I think any successful business, and I think I think anybody can re- run a business, but to be successful at it, it's it's the difference between running a race with ten people in it and coming in first or second or coming in third through tenth. There's nothing wrong with running a race and coming in third through tenth, but if you want to maximize what you're doing, like this business, to come in first or second, that takes that takes something. And I think anybody can do that, but you, you know, you have to learn and you have to really um, be willing to find the spots in your business that you can excel and you can maximize and push that. For me, I think it's just about longevity. I think it's about um, efficiency. I think it's about kind of seeing the big picture. And then, you know, just for me being willing to do certain things until they're done. And that that uh, has pulled us through, and I've been willing to get up off the floor after making mistakes and learn from them. So that is my trip segment. We went on that trip. Uh, we didn't vlog it, and in some ways I'm, I'm sorry about that. I would like to show some things. My son Wheeler did have some things on his channel that were interesting. His vlog link is down below, by the way, and he does uh, have some some real interesting vlogs, and he does a good job. Much different style than mine. Mine are not edited, and, and there's no music generally, and there's, you know, I just, I don't have the energy or time or desire to, to do it at that level, but um, you might want to see some of that. So we didn't vlog that, however, I wanted to talk about it. Okay, so that's going to be about it for today. I've got uh, a few nagging things that I'm wrapping up, and then I feel like I'm going to be back to normal days around here, and a lot of listing, uh, a lot of sorting of stuff and getting it grouped for listing, and packing of orders, and then basically we do have a plan in the background that's in motion and uh, I'm going to talk more about that in the coming days and weeks but changes are happening things are happening Uh, like I said we'll talk about that so never a dull moment I'm as passionate as ever about my family and this business Uh, if I'm worn out sometimes it may not seem like that but uh, you know believe me um, I'm passionate about this. If I if I seem like I'm not, uh, you know, you should sit down with me for an hour. I feel like I'm a go-getter. And sometimes I think I do need a real vacation, though. And I think I'm going to think about that. What, what that exactly would look like and how I'm going to do that. Um, our kids are getting of the age where Juan and I are considering a night away. And the last time we had a night away, actually, was probably about 12 or 13 years ago. Uh, We went on a cruise for a company I was working with. And it was a seven-day South Caribbean cruise. We left Wheeler and his sister Kate with my uh, brother-in-law and my sister and it was fun and there was some business involved uh, fortunately or unfortunately but Lon was pregnant with um, with Jacob and so that limited her mobility a little bit and she got a little seasick from time to time and obviously didn't 
you know, want to have a, a drink or anything. And so it's been a while since we've been able to get away. Now, when we go traveling, her and I do get out and go out to eat and all that alone. And so that's almost as, as good. But I think we're planning, I'm planning anyway. I'm sure Lon is either watching or not. Sometimes, I don't know if she makes it to the end of my long videos sometimes she complains they're too long Rawr. anyway <laughs> i think we're gonna try to get a, a night away here pretty soon oh dealer you're so romantic <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you gonna do all right i wonder what i got in my background watch it sometimes when the camera's on you boy you got a booger hanging out of your nose you got stray hairs didn't change your shirt earwax you know glasses that the you got I got uh, scammed into buying all the coatings and so my glasses always look sort of dirty but it's just the stupid coating chipping off <laughs> cameras don't lie do they Tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow will be a regular vlog of sorts. I don't think we'll have a topic, although I'm going to try to have a topic a week again. I've got some good topics in my head stored up. We're going to do a question and answer thing uh, like good old times here. Probably not this weekend, maybe next weekend. And it'll be a long show question and answer thing. Maybe we'll talk about May and the dollars we made in May and the sales we made in May. I might have a uh, what sold in May video. Who knows what's going to happen. We are picking this weekend, weather pending. So stay tuned. I'm also going to go unpack a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I've got like the equivalent of 50 totes back there. If I, if I try to find all the lenses and put those out, I'm going to make a disaster mess back there. So I have to figure out how to do that too. Oh, life is so exciting. <laughs> okay, pick well list off in. Thanks for watching. Dealer out. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer production. <laughs>